Next question is from Chell's Fit Diary. How should someone adjust their macros and caloric intake as they hit plateaus for weight loss? How do you know when it's time to make an adjustment before hitting a plateau? Mm. Uh, okay, so calories you adjust when the weight loss uh, stops. So if your weight loss stops, you're not burning any more body fat. Typically, and there's a lot of different ways to do this, uh, you would just reduce the calories even more. Now, obviously, you can see where this tends to end up. If you keep doing that, uh, eventually you might get to your goal, but now you're stuck at you know super low calories. So I tend to stagger this. I'll cut the calories, then I'll throw in a you know, few days of higher calories. This tends to stoke the metabolism a little bit mm. and prevents that what's called metabolic uh, adaptation. But in, in, in plain uh, English, you would, you would reduce the calories when the weight loss stops. And if you're trying to gain, you would bump them when, uh, when the weight gain stops. As far as macros are concerned, this is where I like to have a lot of fun. Um, you can keep you know 2,000 calorie low carb diet versus a 2,000 calorie high carb diet feels very different on the body. Feels very different in your gut. This is where you can start to have uh, a lot of fun. I like to do this with myself sometimes. Not change the calories, change the macros, see how I feel. And sometimes uh, this actually triggers uh, you know more effects in my body. Um, so that's macros totally different from calories. You can keep the calories the same, adjust the macros. Uh, calories adjust according to how your body's responding. This is actually this is a really good question, but it's also a really hard one to answer without a lot of uh, stuff that I'd want to ask this person. And the reason why is because I, if I decide which direction I'm going to go with my calories with somebody, even if your goal is like fat loss, weight loss, right? That's your main goal. I, I might actually go up right here. Um, if you're already really low. So for example, let's just say, um, and you know, I'm helping somebody with their nutrition right now and she weighs about 145 to 150. And, you know, we were just coming off of a cut not that long ago. And we did, you know, she was up to, I think I had her up to about 25 originally. We hit a plateau. I dropped her down to uh, 22. She had another plateau. We dropped down to 1800, hit another plateau. Now I went the other direction. And the reason why I went the other direction is because now I'm getting to a place where I, I want her to be able to eat 2,000 plus calories when we get her body to where she wants to sustain it because that's a, that's a realistic amount of food that she can sustain for a really long time. If you get in the game of every time you hit a plateau, you, you drop calories, you drop calories, you drop calories, eventually you get to this place of eating 1,300 calories and you feel like you're starving and yeah, you might have reached close to your goal or hit, even hit your goal, but then you're at a place where you're like, I can't, that's not enough food for me. And you eventually go back up. So sometimes when uh, we have a, a plateau like this, even with someone who's weight loss, what I just recently did to this girl is I said, okay, we're going to bump your calories. I'm going to add 250 calories a day and let's go in and we're going to move your training into a strength phase or I'll switch the programming that we're currently doing. And let, our goal now is let's build some strength. Let's build some muscle. Let's do that for a few weeks and then we'll go back and we'll cut back down on calories. And so it really depends on where this person's metabolism is. If I if I would give them the recommendation of cutting calories or actually potentially increasing calories. Totally, that's really good information. Um, as far as protein is concerned, that's probably the one macro I manipulate the least, totally. but I still manipulate mm -hmm. it. If I have someone that's high protein consistently for months, sometimes I'll throw in a low protein day. And what I notice with that is it, it almost resensitizes the body to protein. Some studies suggest that this actually might happen where if you eat a lot of protein all the time, your body becomes a little less efficient with it. So it uses more of it for energy, less of it for muscle. You throw in like a fast or something like that for a day or two, throw protein back in your diet and all of a sudden the protein becomes more, you know, for lack of a better term, uh, anabolic. But the fat and carbs are the ones I'll manipulate most regularly.